Hello, it's Dawn Michelle from Boho Tarot and welcome to another mod with me. Today we are going to be doing a little bit of a different modification to um, my Literary Witches Oracle. So this is a deck, if you saw um, my previous video where I kind of went through the, the guidebook and the, um, the additional book, this is separate from the set that was published previously. Um, I had mentioned that I was intending to modify this deck. This book, this box is just in my way. Um, and one of the things that um, I was going to do was to work with this deck in, in a very intentional way in that I was going to use the 30 author cards as kind of an oracle type of a style deck and combine that with the 40 um, I think they're called witches material cards, which are kind of a little bit more like fortune tellery, um, Lenormand style type cards, which I think is really cool. But what I want to do is, of course, you know, I, it's got white borders, white borders front and back. So, you know, those have got to go, right? That's just no question. Um, so these ones I'm going to take down to just the artwork and the title because I want to retain the title of, you know, who each of the cards represents. Um, I do have to say that I just absolutely love the artwork of this Oracle deck. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Love these cards. So my thought is to take these down to just their, um, their imagery, get rid of that white border. And then what I'm going to do with these cards is I'm actually going to turn them into a Lenormand size deck. And I've gone through it and I think that the majority of the images should remain intact. Um, and they're all pretty well distinguishable as to what they are. So I think because taking them down to the Norman size will mean cutting off the titles. Um, but I think that, you know, they're all pretty recognizable. So I think I'm going to know what they are even without those titles on there. The backs um, should take down to kind of this smaller border. And that is pretty well my intention. I might have to go a little bit higher up because where the word placement is, but it's going to take it down to just kind of this center point, which is totally fine with me. And then I am going to have um, two different size cards for the same deck. But like I said, my intention is to kind of work with this um, deck in that way to pull a single author and then to use these cards for the actual message. So this is going to provide the energy for my reading or the, the message that it's, you know, who it's from. And this is going to provide the actual contents of the message. So I don't need a giant huge deck for this. I want it to be more Lenormand size because that's kind of the way I intend to work with it. So I'm going to trim it down to Lenormand size. So that is my intention for this project. So let's go ahead and we're gonna shift over to my crafting table so that we can get started. I've gotten everything out here that um, we'll need to get started on this process. I of course have the cards and they are divided um, as soon as I find where it ends. Here we go. So here is all of our um, witches materials cards and then all of our author cards. So these ones are gonna be pretty easy because I'm just gonna follow, um, for the most part, follow along the border of the artwork and I'm just gonna take off the white border on this one or on these 30 cards. So I'm gonna set these aside because these are gonna be fairly quick and easy. And what I'm going to focus on first is these 40 materials cards. So my original thought was that I was going to make them um, Lenormand size because they're they're really big and the artwork or the, the image really is not. So I've gone through them um, kind of multiple times and I've really looked at each of the images to see, am I going to be able to recognize it uh, when I take the titles off? Because while I could just trim the um, white borders off and then it would be the same size that this is going to be trimmed, I wanted to make it smaller. I wanted to make it more of a Lenormand size deck and then have these um, big, beautiful author cards that I could use as my, my main energy and then pull these smaller cards around it. Um, now I think that to do any sort of trimming to this and to take it down that small is going to mean cutting off these keywords because a lot of these images um, go are, are too are too tall to include the 
titles down here and still get them into a small card. However, um, they do have the pictures of the cards in the little guidebook here. So if for some reason I pull a card and I cannot for the life of me remember what it is, I can always look it up here. Uh, not to mention, you know, I can use the guidebook for the keywords um, in here as well. Yes. Now I had originally thought, my original plan was to make them Lenormand size. As I was going through here and laying out, you know, checking, so I went through and checked all the cards to see, you know, would, if I cut it down to this size, would that work? And as much as I love Lenormand size cards, this is just a tad too small for some of the artwork. So we're not gonna go with the Lenormand size. What I'm gonna do instead is actually make it a square deck like I did with my Sacred Creators. Um, so this one, I just trimmed it down to be a square and taking off a, a bunch of the excess and the border that was on this. And I have gone through and checked all of these and they, all of the artwork, all of the images will fit within this square shape. So this is a three inch by three inch. So this will give me a um, sort of three by three card. Now, the thing that I noticed about this is that um, when I flipped it over to the back here, maybe if I turn the back, you can see a little bit better, that the span of this is just to the outside of this outer white line. And the inside goes pretty much, if I'm fairly centered, it goes pretty much from one flower to another. So I think for the most part, the back of the um, card is gonna stay fairly well intact. But I mean, this is not a card that you would you could read reversals with anyway. Um, not that I think that you're really meant to with this particular deck, but. Um, so I think it's gonna work out really well for the back as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this process, but the first thing that I'm going to do is set my measurements because while that's not something that I had previously done in the past, it is something that I do every time I trim a deck now. And of course, we're gonna get some handy washi here in order to mark my measurements. I have um, my cutter, uh, my guillotine trimmer here. This is my newer one. But what I need to do is figure out how much I want to take off of this card. And measurements are always a good thing, right? I should start doing that more. So this card is three and a half. So theoretically, I should be able to take off a quarter inch of each side, and that should give us a nice even measurement on both sides. So quarter of an inch there and a quarter of an inch there. So we're gonna go here and we're going to get some washi going because I love washi for my measurements um, because I just don't always, don't always pay attention. So we wanna go th to three, So three and a half is right here. So the card is exactly three and a half. And we're gonna move it over a quarter of an inch. And that will allow me to take a quarter of an inch off that first side. And there goes our first cut. And you can see there that I was not straight or the printing is not straight, not sure which. Either way, um, it's very possible I was not straight. Let's see if I put it here. <clears throat> uh, I think that I was not straight. So maybe what we need to do is use the back of the card, right? So we wanna make sure that our top and bottom is getting there. Yeah, I was not straight. <laughs> now that's a straight line. So you can see here, I've just got a little bit of that white going on here. Um, I can, I will probably edge this deck so I can also, you know, wrap some edging around if I wanted to, if I needed. So I think that maybe with this particular deck, I think we're going to trim it using the back of the deck. And because I am taking off an exact measurement, um, 
I can go ahead and move this down to the three inches. And I can go ahead and do my, my second side. So for this particular deck, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do both of the long sides first and then on all of the, all 40 cards, and then I will come back and trim the tops, the tops and bottoms off. And that allows me to just get those two measurements in and make two cuts uh, with one card at, at one time. Now, generally I would do one, um, one side at a time because I don't often get really precise measurements like this um, when I'm trimming a deck. So for this particular deck, because I have that going on right now, I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of it. So I'm just gonna make sure my card is lined up really well and I can double check that white line here with my guide. What I'm after is, is something that's usable for me and really, really what I want is just, a, just for them all to basically be roughly the same size just so that they feel okay in my hand. And that's really what this whole process is about anyway, right? It's all about trying to get cards that physically work for me. When we trim decks, that tends to be why we trim them so that they will physically work for us. And that is definitely my goal with this deck. So here I have them, the, 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 three, the two sides taken off. So we're going to go ahead and um, take off the top and bottom now. I would have liked to have gone a little closer in even on these cards, but as you can see, like the spider starts getting really close to the edge, and I think the boar is also... Um, starts getting pretty close to the edge. So I didn't want to, I, I wanted to make sure to leave space on either side of the images. I didn't want to get it too close in. And I definitely found that I had to flip the deck over and then work from there. Otherwise, like I said, because I wasn't working, doing one side at a time like I normally do, um, I was getting confused because I would do this and I would cut this side and then the cut's not right. It's because you're cutting from the wrong side first, if that makes sense. Whereas here I'd be cutting the right side. If I cut this, I'm cutting this right side, but when I flip it over, now it's the left side. These are really minute details that um, just make the slightest little variations. I mean, we're talking just teeny, teeny, teeniest bits of variations in, in the cards. Um, and you'll be able to tell that the Printing is either not exact, um, you know, let's, we can go ahead and blame the printer, that's fine. The printing's not exact. Um, I cut straight, <laughs> uh, but anyway, some of them are a little bit, um, the, the black border on here is, is slightly askew on some of them. It's a little bit thicker in places than others. Again, it's so minute that you're not going to even notice it. But we'll just blame the printer and say it wasn't printed straight. So now what we need to do is decide um, where we want our our front to be or our top and bottoms to be cut. Now I think what I want to do for this one because I while I do want to maintain the integrity of the back the best I can I don't want to accidentally um, cut off an important part of the image in trimming these top and bottoms. So I'm going to trim um, this time from the front and the backs will just come out as they come out because it's more important to me to maintain the, the image on the front of the card than it is to make everything line up perfectly on the back. It already is a little bit um, off in places and you know, that's okay. It still looks fine. I really could go back with a marker and fix it if I wanted to, but anyway, so what I'm gonna do with this one is that I can get this card pretty well in between the two flowers on the back of the card. And so we're just going to use our handy dandy ruler and we're going to actually use some measurements. So these cards are just shy of five inches, which is not a nice, um, nice even number like we had before. I should probably put it down so I'm not accidentally bending it. Get okay, everything as lined up as I can. So that is an inch and if I take an inch off the bottom 
then that is going to put, should put that right in where I want it to be. So we'll just double check with the front here. So if I take an inch off there and an inch off the bottom. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. Those are fairly easy measurements. I can do one inch on one side and one inch on the other. Um, now, because I wasn't really thrilled with the way using those two measurements came out with um, this this first time doing the, the two sides at one time, it kind of threw me off because that's not really the way that I trim cards. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and do all of the tops first. And I like to get my cards going in the direction that I'm going to put them into my trimmer. So I'm going to go ahead and trim an inch off the top. And then I'm going to go back. As you can see here, I've lined up with my edge. And you can see I am, I am really just shy of five inches. But that's okay, we're gonna go ahead and cut the inch from the top and the inch from the bottom anyway. So what we're going to do here is, should be able to slide this down to four. So we wanna do, need to be at the top because that's what makes it straight. So I wanna put it right there at the four. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut the um, top off of all of these cards. So there's our first cut. And you can see that I cut right under my flower, which is where I expected to be. So that worked out really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the tops on all of these. So we've got the top cut off all of these cards here and even this, like we could just, I could just cut that white off and I could leave the titles on it. And um, this, these would make a great size too. Um, a couple of the images you can see here, there was, I think there was one or two, the white dress. I mean, I cut right at the top of that. And I think it was the doll. So there was only two, which really isn't that bad. Oh, the noose was right at the top, but again, didn't cut into the image at all. Oh, there's the doll. So I cut right at the top of her head. But, you know, it still works. And I think that, um, you know, I could leave the titles on for sure. Let's see if I take it down. It's going to be basically right here. Let's move this out of the way. So then we're just going to get this mushroom. And I just, I mean, you could totally, like I said, you could totally just trim the white off here and then you would have the cards with a little bit of a smaller size, a little bit easier to handle, and it would still have the titles on it. But I just really don't think I need the titles, and I just really kind of like the look of that without, um, with just the image and no text on it. So while I did take a moment to pause and think about that before I decided what I for sure wanted to do, um, I did take a look at that. So it's always good to double check just, you know, before you start cutting things off it's always good to just take that last little look and see um the only other thing that i want to check here is before i make my first cut is is there going to be any cards that um that the it'd probably be easier to just do it with my ruler that the image is going to get cut off if i cut it to the three inch mark so it looks like our doll is good. These are probably all gonna be good. So we should be good. So now what we're gonna do, make sure I have them all the correct way. At this point, lay them the way that I want them to go. And we're gonna put this card in here. I love this mushroom card. And I'm gonna put that in there. I'm gonna move my mark. So it's going to be at three inches, so I took an inch off the top. Now I'm taking an inch off the bottom. And 
then there's our cute little square card. I think that's really cool. I do really like it. I mean, the titles are totally cool and it would work um, just as well with those on there, but I do kind of like it, just the images. You know me, I like, I like images. I'm just not a huge fan of titles, just in general. I kind of have this urge to take them off of everything. Like, I don't want the titles impeding my own, my own thoughts. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting the bottoms off of all of these, and then we'll take a look again. Okay, check it out. I made little square cards. How cute are these? Um, that one got a little bit close, but I think overall the images stayed fairly well in the middle of the cards, and I just think they are so cute. I really like them like this. Um, I saved all the little titles because, I don't know, it's words. I might, I might do something with these. I might put them in a journal or, I don't know, do something else. I have an entire pile of words from my um, Sacred Travelers trimming as well. And so I'll probably just add these to it. And sometimes if they have uh, like phrases or keywords or something and I cut them off and they're interesting, I will keep them because I might reuse them for something else. Or maybe I'll make something out of them. We'll see. Anyway, um, I think these came out really well. They are fairly squared. I mean, there are a few cards that are a little bit, you know, a little bit off according to the rest. But you can see the backs, you know, they look pretty good. Um, they're not perfect, but like I said, that's okay. I'm all right with them not being perfect. I do think that um, I need to edge them. But what uh, we need to do before we go to that extent is we need to round the corners of these. But before we're going to do that, I am actually going to finish up and trim the author cards now. So we're just going to get all the trimming out of the way right from the start. Okay, so I have finished trimming the author cards and I think they look absolutely gorgeous, borderless. Um, it just... Yeah, it just really makes the artwork pop. They're just, they're stunning. I mean, they're stunning images anyway. I really like the art style of this particular deck. And of course we have our witches material cards, which we've made into little square cards, which I think look really cool. Um, so the next thing that we're gonna do is just go ahead and round the corners. Okay, so we have got all of the cards rounded, both the author cards, and look how great those look. And our little witches material cards are all rounded now too. So the next thing I'm gonna do, and well, I should say the final thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead and edge both of these decks. So we'll check back in when I am done with that process. Okay, I thought we'd do just a quick edging check-in. I've got a little, probably a little more than half of the author cards edged. Um, I do want to note that, so I'm using the Crayola on this deck, which is actually are my favorite markers to really use. They don't, they generally don't bleed. They usually wipe right off. Um, they're non-toxic. They are washable, so they do... Um, they're not archival quality, but I haven't had an issue with it. They might fade eventually at some point, but so far they're holding up really great for me and they are really quick and easy to edge with and they have no fumes. Like one of the things I can't stand about Sharpie besides the fact that it bleeds is the fumes, which just gives me a headache. Um, I don't know if you can see here. I'll try to zoom in. I am, because this is linen cardstock, I am getting just the tiniest little bit of bleed, even with the Crayola marker. Um... See if I can get that zoomed in there for you. I don't know if that'll show up or not, but uh, I have yet to have a linen tech that didn't bleed a little bit. And I think that's just because the fibers that are in um, the card, probably. I mean, it's it's called linen for a reason, so I assume there must be fibers in it. Um, this card was like, I think I did a couple of cards with the Crayola. I got out my distressed ink pad in black suit because I thought maybe I would give the ink pad a try and um, it made a mess like this is ink pad this is ink pad and all this along the side here is all ink pad and it just bled really badly 
and then it smeared and I couldn't get it off. It smeared all over the this white border on the back. Um, you know, it's okay. It's it's not preferable, but it's just one card and at least, you know, now I know. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using the Distressed Ink Pads on this deck. Um, the Crayola is working pretty well. Like I said, I'm getting just the tiniest bit of bleed on these lighter cards. I'm assuming that I'm probably going to get bleed on these cards as well if I choose to stick with the black Crayola, um, which I haven't 100% decided what I'm going to do with that one, um, to be honest with you. But I thought we'll just, just wanted to touch, touch base with that real quick, and then I thought I'd just pile them up together so we can see how it's coming along. Not to say everything about Crayola, they dry pretty quick, so um, while I wouldn't probably shuffle and use them right away, they definitely do dry enough to, to be touching them and holding them and working with them in that sense. So here are the cards that I have edged in black. So I think that the black looks really good with the back. Um, I, did, I did consider using like a really dark brown, but I, with the backs being very black and white, I felt like I just really needed to stick to the black. So here's the cards unedged, what's left. So you can see it definitely gives it a darker look and it definitely, I think, finishes it off really well. Even though the white sides, I think, would be fine with this deck because we do have that white on the back. Um, but I just really like an edged card. I just think it looks really polished, really finished. So that's why I choose to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to finish up edging um, the rest of the deck and then we'll do another check-in. Okay, I have finished edging the entire deck. So we have all of our author cards here, which have the lovely black edges. And then I did end up edging all of the witch's material cards in the same black using that Crayola. And I think that just looks really well, works really well. I, as you can see probably here, I did get, because this is linen cardstock, a little bit of bleed on the top. But I think it actually works with these um, cards really well and, and this type of imagery. The bleed kind of looks like it's supposed to be there now. Um, it looks intentional and I do like that. You might think that like we're done now, right? This is the whole process. It's over. But no, not quite because you know me. I got to like make a book. Um, so one of the things that I want to do, and I apologize for the overhead lights, but it's starting to get dark here and I need to be able to see. Um was to focus more on this book in terms of a guidebook using it with the author cards. So I, I absolutely love all the information in this book. I did a video on that as well. And what was in here is just a small portion, if I could find one. Um, what's in here is just a small portion of what we see down here. So we don't have all of this information and all of these lovely keywords. Now there is keywords in the guidebook um, up at the top, you know, underneath the, the main title is on the card. So the keyword that's in orange here is actually on the card. So that's, I'm good there. I will be missing these little keywords if I don't keep this guidebook, but I actually intend to use the keywords up here because I think that they just work a lot better in terms of how I'm going to use these cards, which is letting the authors um, serve as the energy or the messenger for the message that I will get from the witches material cards. So I don't really need keywords for these. They do each have a keyword on the bottom of the card. So I feel like between that and what's in the book, I've got plenty there to work with. However, what I would like to have in case I need it is the witches materials. So as you can see here, I have, you know me, deconstructing books. Um, you know, I've torn this whole section out of the book. It was, um, I think it was primarily glue bound. The pages just kind of ripped out. So I do have them all as individual sheets. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is actually bind these together real quick or from knowing me, it probably won't be real quick. I'm gonna bind these together and I am going to make a little pocket, probably right here in the front of my book. Will that close? Yep, that should close well enough. So I'm gonna make a pocket right here in the front of my book that I can, after I bind these, that I can stick this in so I can pull this out in case I do want to refer to the guidebook for these because these do have, um, 
because these do have not only the keywords that I cut off or the titles that I cut off, there are keywords underneath, so I might want those. I don't know how often I'll reference it, but I'd rather keep it and just have it just in case. Um, the rest of this I will probably just recycle because the rest of this information is in the larger book that I have. So, of course, you know, I'm going to make it... A bigger process than it really needed to be probably but that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do now so just real quickly here I've pulled out I've got my my little booklet here I've got my book that I'm gonna make a pocket in and some papers that I will be using to make that pocket um, this is the fabric that I will be using to make a bag for this deck because of course once I make the book and I finish the deck then I have to make a bag to put in it because um, I've now trimmed this deck down, particularly these cards, that if I put them in the box, that actually is kind of hard to open without cards in it. If I put them in here, they're just going to slide all around in there. Um, you know, you can see that's, that's a pretty big difference. And given the fact that the deck is smaller, I'm not going to use this book. I really don't care for keeping my decks in boxes anyway even though this is a beautiful one so I will probably hang on to this and recycle it and use it for something else or I can not recycle repurpose it so I'm going to be making a bag and these are the fabrics that I have purchased to um to make the the bag and thankfully it is getting close to Halloween so there is lots of great Halloween type fabric which I thought would just work really well with um this particular deck and this fabric has writing in it, which I thought was really great. And this one has the little witches hats and the brooms and the cauldrons, all things that we see in the deck. So, oops. So what I'm going to do is actually make a little fabric binding for this book. And, um, and I'm going to use probably this fabric because I have much more of this fabric than I do of this one. And then we'll make a, then I'll go ahead and make that pocket. So I'll just speed up this process so you can see how it, how it goes. Now that the modification is complete, let's take a look at the final product. So here we have all of our author cards that have been trimmed down to a beautiful border list, just down to that artwork, which I think is really beautiful. And we have all of our little witches materials cards, which are now little square cards and beautiful. And I absolutely love them. And you can see they kind of get switched around in all kinds of different directions, which will be really interesting for some directional reading. So let's go ahead and just take a quick moment and lay down some cards. So we're gonna go ahead and give these a shuffle. And the author cards still do shuffle beautifully, even though I've trimmed them. So I imagine if you trimmed the whole deck, it would still shuffle quite well. They overhand shuffle beautifully. Whoops. I say that as I throw cards around. So get those a nice shuffle. And these ones we're probably not going to be able to rifle shuffle because they are little, but now they overhand beautifully. I can just mix them up and I can tell you that I've got them going in all different directions now um, because I've kind of been playing with this deck a little bit. So it'll be interesting to see how that comes out. So let's go ahead and do how I am planning on working with this deck, which is pulling an author. And we have Angela Carter, who I absolutely love. And let's see what message Angela has for us. Apparently I feel the need to shuffle these again. So 
So we have cauldron. Can probably come down a little bit. Cauldron, cat, and wings. So let's go ahead and, I mean, we could totally read these intuitively, right? But just for fun, because I did add a whole section in my book, so let's go ahead and let's look up Angela Carter. And I just opened right to her. How fascinating is that? So the tagline up here is Fairy Godmother of Blood Tales of the Circus and Mirrors. So Angela steps into an elevator with a group of businessmen. The door shut. She sees that one man has the head of a boar, another a tiger, a lion. Each clutches his briefcase, ornate rings glittering between hairy knuckles and stares up at the changing floor numbers. Angela is watering roses when the demure female doll in a red riding habit enters the garden. Not another one. Angela rolls her eyes. She takes out her knife and stabs the doll in the heart. The riding habit collapses and a bleeding wolf escapes from under the cloth, dashes out of the garden. Dark drops of blood sink into the soil and Angela's roses bloom a deeper, more delicious red. While mourners attend Angela's sober funeral, her soul bows glamorously on a grand stage. She holds hands with two elderly sequence showgirls and though the audience is empty, the ladies exit to a rashous applause. So Angela Carter's tales were really about kind of dark fairy tales. And so I think that's definitely the message that she has for us. And is that not perfect for October? That diving into those darker stories. And let's see what her little messages have to say. So we have Cauldron. which is creativity, the rich broth and surprising yourself. We have cat, which is the untamed, self-ownership and watching. And then we have the wings, which is wishes, ambitious, ambition and wandering. So we have tapping into that creative energy with our untamed wild nature to create our dreams and those things that we want to bring into fruition. So I think that's a wonderful message from Miss Angela Carter. Um, her keyword on her card is identity. So in order to step into our own identity, we need to tap into that creative nature within us and really embrace the things that we want to fulfill in our lives. So I think that's a wonderful message from her. And this is, of course, how I will be working with the beautiful literary witches. So thank you so much for joining me for this mod with me of the Literary Witches Oracle. I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life.